Do you want to get your minis to look as if they are fighting in the dark bowels of a forbidden temple, a dying cobweb reading ancient tomb or the dungeons of a cursed castle? Well, say no more because in this video I'm going to show you a very easy way to do this using only paint. That's right, only paint. My name is Miguel, this is Rusty Wash and in this video tutorial I am about to show you how to paint dungeon bases. I have dozens of miniatures for my Hero Quest and Warhammer Quest collections and one of the things some of you have asked a few times is How do you do the bases for them? This is the process broken in a few simple steps. I start from the minis being primed in a light color. White or light greys work perfectly for this. And notice my goblins have been already painted before starting with the bases. I recommend painting your bases after you paint the miniatures because of the risk of staining the base if you paint them before the rest of the mini. The first step is choosing your undercoat for the base. I usually use a grey bluish color like the ones that you see here. But any color can do as long as it is dark. I have done these other three with different colors to prove the point. This one is trying to mimic the floor tiles of Curse City, this one from Advanced Hero Quest and this one from one of the rooms in Warhammer Quest. Choose a dark version of the color you want to end up with for the first coat and you're good to go. After that is done, you now have to sketch the flagstones. The shape is up to you. Squares, small tiles, roundish flagstones. I prefer the latter because they are easier to do when your minis are glued to the bases already. And this way, I do not have to worry about right angles when feet are on the way. I start with a bone color. And here there are many brands and hues you can use. But these are some examples. You can use other colors too, as long as they are lighter than the base. Experiment with anything you can think of and see what comes out of it. Notice the paint is liquid enough to show the undertone underneath. There is no rocket science here. Just disperse the paint around and leave some areas without paint so you can see the undertone. If you know how to glaze, this is a glaze. A very rough, very easy to do one, but a glaze. You can do this step whilst the undertone is still drying which means that it will become a feathering effect, making the transitions way smoother. Notice that with washes, it needs to be done before it starts drying, otherwise it will smudge the paint. I am fine with this though, because I will get to fix it in subsequent steps, but it might not be what you are looking for, so bear that in mind. Once you're done with the first sketching of the flagstones, use pure white to do the same again, but only on the edges. The accentuated contrast will exaggerate the illusion of volume and make them look more realistic. Now it's time to paint the cracks and seams. This has two main parts, shading the areas in between the flagstones and drawing some cracks. For both, I will use any of the following, either an ink, either a watered down paint like very dark brown or black, or either one of these contrast paints. Draw the lines using the gaps you left before as a guide. This will make the flagstones really pop. And be careful not to make very thick lines, but remember, you can always go back with bone and white paint, and if you are not satisfied with the thickness, just fix it. Then, if you feel adventurous, draw a few cracks. They are not very difficult to do if you use a thin brush and you understand how to create a realistic crack. Now, the trick is to actually control your poles just enough to allow a light tremble and drag the brush slowly and carefully. Look at how I use the table to hold my arm in place, whilst my hand is allowed to move freely. My cracks usually break up in two branches, that then can break in two, and so on. It is very similar to drawing a lightning bolt. One particular shape I like is the triangle crack with the small cracks inside. It is very easy to emulate, just watch the process here. Now, once I am satisfied with the amount and length of the cracks, I move on to the next step which is the shade glaze. This subtle shading and coloring makes the exaggerated highlights a little bit more subtle whilst still retaining the volume. To achieve this on my HeroQuest basis, I use Agrax Earth Shade. Dipping a number 3 size brush is enough for a 20 to 25 mm size base. I paint the whole base with it, spreading it all over the place. If the color you chose is too strong, you can add a little water to make it both flow better and to become more translucent. You need to be able to see what is underneath, so the transparency of the glaze is an important part too. Too transparent and it won't look good, 
to opaque and the whole volume of the highlights will be gone. Although I like Agrax Earthshade for these other bases, I am going to use different colors. Once the glaze is dry, you can add some extra lighting to the edges of the different tiles. Even though I do not do this for my Hero Quest bases, for these others I did it like this. I choose one side of the base and this will be the light source direction. After this, I paint the borders of the cracks and tiles facing that side with pure white paint. Notice I used a very thin brush and the paint consistency is liquid enough to flow from the brush onto the bases. And once this last step is done, I paint the edge of the base with pure black. Other colors can be used, of course, but you can even paint the edges as continuations of the flagstones if you prefer that. As with any other kind of basing for your minis, you can always add some extra details like blood splatters, tufts or moss, rocks and sand or lost weapons, gear, bones, whatever. Your imagination is the limit. And these are the results. Watch this video next and don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, my name is Miguel, this is Rush the Wash, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Un beso y adios.